Ah, summertime. It's a time for playing in the water. A time for jumping in the lake. And playing with man's best friend. It's a time for grilling chicken. And a time for grilling steaks. It's also a time for playing games in the park. And a time for family gatherings. So let's abandon that old restaurant grilling method. Get on down to our local supermarket. Pick up our favorite food items. season growing time so today because the gym was able to get some nice elk we're gonna make some elk burgers on a whole new level what kind of levels are beyond on a date level that's all i'm talking about <laughs> so we'll let brian take it from here and um start on introducing the burgers and what we're going to do so mr brian take it away all right so one of the uh, one of the benefits about elk is it's a much leaner cut. A lot of people compare it to uh, bison. Um, it's about 91% lean meat, uh, a lot of natural flavor. So if you cook it right, it's every bit as flavorful as a ground beef burger that's got a lot of fat in it. So no need to really over season it. What I have here is just a combination of salt, pepper, uh, granulated garlic, a little bit of chopped fresh herbs, a little bit of crushed red pepper. That's where the magic happens. <laughs> Make sure. What's what, right there, buddy? Some gloves that I wish weren't purple, but <laughs> <laughs> that's what color my size is. <laughs> so you want to just make sure it mix that seasoning up real good, even throughout. Okay. So all I'm doing now is folding and pressing to make sure that uh, seasoning blend that we made is uh, spread throughout evenly. A common concern 
with uh, ground elk and ground bison and things like that or that it's going to be a really gamey flavor, right. um, which is actually not true at all. If you get fresh, uh, grass-fed um, products, mm -hmm. it's cooked right, it has a good flavor at all. So are there a big difference in taste uh, between like we have bison elk or regular ground meat? There is a big difference in um, bison and ground beef or elk and ground beef, okay. uh, but uh, a really common comparison is bison and uh, okay. they have a very similar flavor. Okay. Um, right, similar flavor. Okay. Don't ask me, sir. We're talking about you, okay? Come back here, we'll like it, okay? All right, so we're blended up good. Um, I'm going to shoot for uh, five to six ounce, bur six ounce burgers. Okay. About like that. All right. So when you pan it, how hard are you pressing? You put a lot of you put a lot of weight on it. I'm not no. You don't want to do that. I know a lot of times when some people when they do burgers, you know, they add like you know, like back in the old time they put the onions and green peppers and burgers stuff like that. Would you suggest you do that? You know, bite some help. It's got so much natural flavor that um, you know adding anything like that is is really just going to take away from the natural goodness of, of the right. product. Interesting. Sometimes I need salt, pepper, and all. Elk and bison are both, uh, are also really good if you're making a meatloaf. Okay. Um, it's lean enough, you know, if you use ground beef mm. um, to make a meatloaf or ground pork. Right, yeah. Um, you have to add your binder, your egg, and your uh, mm. breadcrumbs right. to hold it together because that fat renders out as it cooks right. uh, with bison. Um, elk, ground turkey, and uh, that egg and uh, breadcrumb binder is, is not necessary. Okay, okay. How many um, pounds of meat do you have? Maybe it's a pound and a half. Okay. How many birds do you think you should have? I hope to get. How many people we gotta feed? Six burgers. Okay. You just like it. Is it coming to that point? Yeah. Do I get like a smiling face because they catch up? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, I'm all game. That's what I got too. Oh, man. This is like the whole pack. Alright, so we're gonna get five burgers. Uh, we'll actually have a little bit left there. So you get the slider. <laughs> the measurement was off a little bit. It's okay. It happens. It happens. I know you're telling someone um, before about the thumbprint. Yep. Another, uh, it happens more with fattier meat, but it's a good uh, rule of thumb for any time you're grilling a burger. Mm. Um, you know, you throw a burger on the grill right. and it cooks fine for about halfway, mm. and then that center starts to swell up. Right. So by the time you put it on the bun, you got a big center, right. and it doesn't even reach the edges of the bun. A um, quick fix for that is in the center of the burger, mm. just go ahead and put thumbprint like that. Okay. And that's gonna eliminate that problem. This will come out, but you also have the width of your burger because you want the burger to be the width of your bun, right? Right, right. So quick little thumbprint like that will take care of that issue. Awesome. So now we got the burgers. I like to save a little seasoning. Mm -hmm. uh, so once we're on the grill, we put the grill marks on it and we flip it. We'll top it with the rest of this okay. just so it has that little extra bit of flavor. Okay. But the burgers are ready to go on the grill. So now it's your turn, sir. All right. So for me, any kind of burger, you gotta have your toppings. For me, I love caramelized onions. It has that little bit of sweetness and wild fountain. So Jamel was lovely enough to grow an onion. 
We're trying to make it. Okay. Oh, I'm going to it. So, I have that set up. 3D printer. Oh, 3D printer. Got it. So, to, uh, you can do a cutting in different ways. We're going to do a, a Julian. As you see in previous episodes, I was cutting a Julian. I had to demonstrate it. I'm going to show it again. So, if you haven't got a chance to see that episode, you get a new chance. So, remember, always suck your fingers in. Because you don't want to cut your fingers off. I don't go to the hospital, and Jamal wants to drive me in Hawaii. <laughs> so, cut the ends off, just like this. Very compost around here. The magical compost man. <laughs> cut it in half, just like this. Peel the skin off. You know, you want to peel a good layer off, you know, if it's, it looks, if it's, the onion's a little bit older, you know, you could uh, peel that extra layer off. So now, we're gonna cut the onion. So we cut it in half, we peeled it, now we're gonna join in. And remember, always chuck it in your fingers, cut it at an angle, and get it nice and thin, just like this. Take your time, because, you know, you don't want to cut your hand. Because, you know, sometimes that happens. But go at your own pace, and whatever is easier for you. Because if you go too fast, you're a harder chance of cutting yourself, and that is not fun at all. So, pay it right here. And the kind of season we're going to do for these caramelized onions is a little bit of salt, pepper. So, now we have some beautiful as asparagus. There's a couple of things you want to look out for. You don't want some floppy, old looking asparagus. You want to look for a nice, bright green asparagus. It has a little like, kind of wrinkly kind of look. Do not buy it. That would be the worst mistake you do. So the first thing you want to do, take these rubber bands off. Because, you know, if you're cool like me, you can um, make get enough of these to make a little ball and bounce it like a little basketball. So, you know, you don't want too many on a cutting board at a time. Lay it out nice and even. You want to see how it has like a little bit of this kind of di dysfunctional color. You want to take it, your knife to about it has an, you see the nice green about right here. Just cut it right down the middle, nice and straight. And just like this, this bear gets. You're gonna place it down nice and even, and you're gonna cut all of it just like this. Remember, nice, nice flat surface. And once it's all done, you're seasoning a little bit of oil, salt, and pepper. So you're gonna do about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half salt. Now we're gonna do the sweet potato fries. As you see, the Chef Brian already cut them up. So now I'm gonna season them. When you put them on here, you wanna lay them nice and even with a little air between them. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so that they get nice. And if you have the patience, you can flip them and with halfway through and they come out nice and crisp and beautiful. So now, look out the do this. So now we're gonna take a little salt. So what do you call that? <laughs> the brandy shot. That's not what I really do. It's <laughs> called it the money shot. Like that. Like that, like that, like that. Do you recommend them with something? Uh, always. Then we'll get a little pepper shaker. Grind on me. And boom. Need a left handed one so I can do with my left hand. Like that. You take them and into the oven. No. All right, so now we got the grill uh, set about 450. Uh, it's going to be hot enough to get a nice sear on either side. So we'll go ahead and load up the burger. And if you get cold, you go like this. Because, you know, Jamel, he says it's from the north, but I don't believe it. So that's why he's not here. <laughs> you hear that? That's where the magic happens. AKA the money shot. No, don't, don't bring the money shot into my grilling session. <laughs> <laughs> so like I mentioned earlier, the little, Extra seasoning, we'll go ahead and hit this. 
So how many minutes do you like to sear for each side? We're gonna go about three and a half minutes. Rotate it 180 degrees. About three minutes, flip it. And then for the final rotation, we're gonna sit it up top. That way we're not cooking it all the way through. Get a nice medium burger. Yep. All right, so the burgers have been uh, rotated and flipped. So now um, they'll finish cooking. While they're doing that, we'll take the asparagus. So why do you want to put a bunch of oil with as well when you're seasoning for the asparagus when you're on the I grill? I go heavy on the olive oil, so um, the idea is that that olive oil is going to drip down into the grates and cause a little bit of a, a burst of a flame, and then you actually get a really nice charred, uh, charred asparagus. Thank <laughs> you. 